everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, so today um, I am going to be doing a spiral straight pour and I am using this neutral palette that uh, I got my color from the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards. I am using the color palette in this painting here. Um, so I didn't have uh, the paint uh, parchment, I think is the color that uh, I used in this one. So I had to create my own version of it. I just mixed my own. Um, but what I did was I have titanium white mixed with a drop of Mars Brown from Arteza and Raw Sienna from Arteza. I did the, the Mars Brown and it was a little too pink um, ish in the pink issue. So I added a bit of the raw sienna and that gave it uh, the, the color that I was looking for. The other colors that I have here are the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in soft gold, rose gold, and uh, this one is antique bronze. The color palette is uh, is a neutral color palette, so you know this is would go in anybody's house. Uh, I do like working with neutral palettes. Um, sometimes, you know, it's fun. Anywho, you know, these paints are mixed: one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of ninety percent water and ten percent Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it is disappearing pretty quickly. It is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. If it is going thin and then thick and then thin and then thick, you have not mixed it enough. So before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? <laughs> if you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have. There are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. This, and, and the video has everything that you need to know, the exact paint brands, color, consistency, the recipe, of course, the technique, all of the stuff that I can't fit on a card. This here is the painting that's in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes here can be used as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, GinaDeLuca.net, and also at Amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I like to make sure that uh, I have enough for my pour. I have uh, put more on my base coat than I intended to in the past, so this is how I ensure that I have enough for my pour. And I will try to leave a bit, a little bit in the cup to put on top of my pour cup. Uh, you will notice that I have already covered my edges. Uh, I do this for a couple of reasons. One, uh, when I do my straight pours, the way that I mix them and um, with Floetrol and on the thin side. Sometimes the edges uh, end up thin and you can see the canvas. So I like to cover the canvas ahead of time, um, especially when I'm using custom colors like this. Uh, matching it after the fact is challenging. But besides that, it's just extra work and it only takes you know, two minutes to paint the sides ahead of time. And another good reason to do that is 
it allows you to see what your color is going to look like when it dries. And sometimes it might dry too dark or too light and you still have an opportunity to adjust it. But uh, we need to put down a base coat because that allows our paints to slide around easily on the canvas. That is going to help you maintain your composition. It helps to avoid those squiggly lines that you can get sometimes when you are painting on a dried canvas. Something has to stick to the canvas first. So it is going to be the paint that hits it first and generally what's going to happen is the paint that is on the edges of your puddle is going to be what is going to stick to the canvas and then the paint that is in the center is going to roll over top of that. So you lose all of your composition on the edges and sometimes that's where the magic happens. I like to uh, give myself as many options as possible. So I use a base coat that is a color that is in my painting. Uh, for a straight pour, that would be, I usually use the background color. The background color is the first color that goes in the cup because that is the color that uh, does not sell. That is the color that reacts with these paints that sell. I'm gonna give these bubbles a torch. It does create bubbles laying down a base coat like this. And there's just bubbles in the paint. It just happens. But what we want to do is uh, get rid of any bubbles in the base coat so they don't pop through your pour. Okay, now I'm going to put some paint in a cup. I'm starting with the soft gold. I'm pouring from up high. I'm allowing it to sink and churn. Be sure to check your consistency before pouring. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Okay, and then the rose gold. And if you follow me, then you know that typically when I am doing these, the color that I put in last is the one that has the most contrast with the background color. And a bit of that ends up in the center, even though I'm putting it in last. A tiny bit of it ends up at the bottom of my cup, and that ends up in the center, and that actually winds up getting stretched significantly. So even though it's just a tiny bit that comes out at the end, it actually winds up being the focal point of my painting. So this one thickened up on me a hair, so I added a bit of my thinning concoction of 90% Floetrol, I mean, sorry, 90% water, 10% Floetrol. Again, pouring from up high, allowing it to sink and churn. The churning and blending that the satin enamels, I'm sorry, the deco art paints, uh, as it is blending in there, that's what will wind up creating those bolder cells, that awesome 3D action that I can get sometimes. Okay, and then I'm gonna take what is left in my cup and just go over top so that all of the paints have a chance to react. And this, this, the paints that are on the top are probably just going to get tilted off, but I like to, again, give myself as many options as possible and be thorough and all of that good stuff. Okay, make sure that my canvas is centered. I am going to pour, pour quickly, spin slowly, and spinning clockwise. Um, actually, let me one more, one more pass of the bubbles with old Bernie two times here. Never late, it's the first try. 
Okay, here we go. So the slower I spin, the more of a spiral effect it's going to have. If I spin quickly, it's just going to look like a ring pour. As I get closer to the end of the cup, I will get closer to the canvas, which will give me more control. And then once that bronze comes out, here it comes, I will do one and a half turns because that is the Fibonacci, one to 1.5. Of course, moving slower as I get towards the end of the cup. Okay, perfect. Okie dokie. Now, my work surface is not level, so I do have to keep this moving. It is level to the table, uh, not the spinner. So as I'm popping these bubbles, it is bringing paint up from the layers underneath. The bubble will carry the paint from the layers underneath. And what happens is, because the deco art paints are matte and finish, when they dry, they dry very matte. And what happens is the background paints are glossy and the deco art paints are matte and the matte paints have a hydrophobic effect meaning that it is pushing away those glossier paints so as they come up they will grow, they'll get bigger because it is pushing the glossy paint away. So uh, if you've not seen this before, basically I get cells without using silicone because I am using matte paints with a glossier paint. It does not have to be a high gloss paint. It just needs to be glossier than the matte paints. But the more of a difference there is between the gloss and matte factors, the more reaction you're going to get. Um, so as I let this sit and allow these cells to develop, I'll let the paint puddle percolate. Um, once I start spinning or tilting, whichever the case may be, in this case it is spinning, those cells will get bigger. So the more patient I am now allowing this to develop, the bigger cells I will wind up getting. Um, I am, I'm liking this color combo. It is very soft, which is what I was going for. My Fibonacci is looking good. Uh, 
Okay. It's looking a little bit thin right there. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of love. Sometimes the canvas gets a little thirsty and it really soaks up that paint. Okay. Okay. I could let this sit longer and probably get more cells, but um, I want to keep some of this background, if I can. Sometimes the cells just keep developing after I walk away and that's all there is to it, but I'm gonna see if I can keep some of that negative space. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a whirl. And remember, you don't have to spin fast. It does not have to fling to your walls. It will move on its own. And the, if, if your canvas is just ever so slightly unlevel, then you have probably noticed that uh, it can shift on you quite a bit over time. Okay, so I need this to go a little bit more. So I'm going to push my canvas in the direction that I need it to tilt off of. Um, think of it like the merry-go-round uh, on the playground, the one where people spin you. If you are on the outside of that merry-go-round, you are really feeling that centrifugal force. Uh, but if you're in the center, you don't feel it quite as much. That is basically the idea of what I'm doing by pushing my canvas to one side because I am dealing with my unlevel work surface. <laughs> so the most important thing to me is that my center is in the center. That is... Um, for me, for the composition that I am going for, that is the thing that I am most concerned with. So if my center shifts, I can always just, just tilt it just a slight, tiny, tiny bit to bring that center exactly where I want it. Okay. So you can see here how it has this wiggly look to it. So that's what happens if your canvas is dry. So that was a little thin there. The, uh, come on now, baby, come out of the cup. My base coat right there was probably thinner than it was elsewhere. So I'm just going to put a little bit of what is left in my cup down just to give it something to slide a little more easily. Oh, let's see. I could probably I can just grab some of these drippings since I'm running out in my cup and this will give me what I need. Okay. Now, let's give this another spin. Get those edges covered.
still need just a touch of love on this corner here. But you can see like when you use the drips to cover your corners the way that I just did, it still looks like it's part of your painting. Just covering any spots that uh, did not get the coverage that I was hoping for. And this is looking lovely. And then scrape your edges, scrape the drips because it will continue to pull the paint from the sides of your canvas, which will start to pull it from the top of your canvas on the edges. Okay, I do anticipate having some more cells pop up. Uh, that is the nature of the straight pour. I'm going to let this sit and do whatever it's going to do, and I will bring you in for a close up back in a few. Okay, here it is. This is what I was hoping for. The bronze is looking, uh, the camera is picking it up kind of funny. It's looking a little darker on the camera than it is on the canvas. It is uh, softer than that. Let's see if I can get the color to adjust. But basically, that is what we're working with. The spiral came out fantastic. Got some very cool cells. I love when they do that, when they have that ring. It looks very organic. Uh, let me take this moment to let you guys know about my Patreon. I forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, I do have a Patreon account now. And uh, there are sneak peeks. There is a private Facebook group. There are Zooms uh, where we have Q and A's and kind of check in with each other and, um, you know, help each other get over the hurdles. Uh, any questions that you might have about the techniques that I do, or painting in general or I mean, any aspect of uh, pouring, I am there to answer your questions. So we have those Zooms once a week, and uh, so far it's going great. We've got people from all over the world, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so check that out, patreon.com slash Gina DeLuca. And also, let me remind you that I will be teaching at the Fluid Art Experience in Seattle in April. There will be a trailer at the end of this video where you can see all of the artists who will also be teaching. Uh, a good time is gonna be had by all. I'm sure of it. So be sure to check out the description box below for links to uh, my Patreon, the Fluid Art Experience, all of my affiliates, uh, Deco Art being one of them, Arteza being another. If you want to try these paints out for yourself and you're going to order them online please do use the links provided and the coupon codes and i receive a small commission at no additional cost to you also in the description box you'll find the link to my website ginadeluca.net where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale and last but not least our facebook group go make some art join us there post your masterpieces ask your questions get some inspiration a good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. And I think that is it for me for today. Again, stay tuned for the uh, Fluid Art Experience trailer. And yeah, that is it for me. And I think uh, Mina Villegas is up next in the Sunday premiere train. All right. 
that is it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.